Welcome back. It's 10 minutes before 3 o'clock. For our last segment, we're joined by a Treasury dealer at NetBank, Nozibu Siso Dembe, to give us our financial markets this afternoon. A very good afternoon. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Good <laughs> afternoon. Having you. And thank you for having me. Yeah, so what's, what's happening in the markets today? Um, we saw that the rand showed signs of strength mm -hmm. uh, Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. How is it performing this week? Thanks for that, Lulu. So yes, the rand did show signs of strength on Thursday and Friday, um, and this was after the U.S. inflation data was was announced last week. Mm -hmm. um, it came in quite soft at at three percent, which was lower than expected. Mm -hmm. And this is the U.S. has been on a downward trajectory in terms of interest rates for the past couple of months, um, mm -hmm. and this now indicates to the market that there is really a chance that interest rates will be cut soon. Mm -hmm. Further to that, we also had our retail sales data, which came out quite steady, um, and it's been steady the whole year, um, which means, which basically implies that the consumer in the U.S. still has buying power, so they're still able to spend money on goods and services, mm -hmm. and this this then indicates that there's a recovery in in the economy. So the U.S. inflation data coupled with the retail sales data really firms thoughts in the markets that interest rates might go down soon. The hopes are that they'll, they'll start to reduce in September, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I think the Fed chair did mention that they need a lot more data in order to be comfortable, but we're seeing the data come out. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, our US dollar against the IZL is trading at 18.1624. The pound against the EZL is trading at 23.6538, and then the euro against the EZL is trading at 19.8579. Um, and another really important thing that we also saw on Monday was the czar, along with other emerging market currencies, um, then started to lose that, that strengthening momentum. And mm. this came after this weekend. Um, I think you'll probably know that there was a, a, an assassination attempt mm. on the former president of the USA, um, Donald Trump. So after that happened, um, the emerging currencies did lose a bit of strength. Um, investors felt that this event would likely help Trump use the, lose, um, win the elections in November this year. Mm. And it also reduces appetite for riskier assets such as the RAND and, and similar currencies. Okay, on that uh, assassination attempt on Donald Trump, yeah. what are there any, is there any data that you can look out for this week? Um, so, so the data wouldn't be particularly about the assassination attempt. Mm. Um, there's still investigations about that going on. Mm. But the data we can look out for this week, which might affect markets, is on... Um, Tomorrow, the Saab is announcing and well, is making an interest rate decision. Mm -hmm. um, the expectation there is that interest rates will remain flat. Um, and, and then also, um, the South African president, Cyril Ramaphosa, is also addressing parliament this week um, on what the priorities for the coalition government are. So okay. this will also be interesting and will affect markets because it indicates how well the new GNU is working well together. All right, so moving on to commodities, when I last checked uh, this morning, uh, gold was actually performing quite well. Uh, gold price went up. Uh, tell us more about that. Um, thanks for that, Lulu. So yes, you're right. Gold price has been ticking up mm -hmm. quite a bit, currently trading at $2,472.95 per ounce. And this also comes after the 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 inflation data last week, which increased market hopes that interest rates will be cut soon. Um, we've also got Brent crude trading currently at $83.78 um, per barrel. And we've seen this, the price of Brent crude decrease in the past couple of days um, due to weakening demand for oil in China. So China is one of the world's largest importers of, of crude oil. Um, and there was data that came out um, economic data that came out of China indicating that the the economy of, of China grew between April and June, it mm. grew by 4.7%. Okay. Yet in the first quarter of the year, it grew by 5.3%. Mm. So this shows a, a slight contraction or a reduction in the rate of growth. And the worry there is that 
um, it will then affect the demand for oil from the largest importer of oil. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's affecting the demand, the, the, the price of oil then decreases. Okay, so when you look at the S&P 500 and FTSE 100, uh, we will also, co also considering the UK inflation. Mm, so, um, today with our S&P 500, S&P 500 has been doing great over the past th probably three to four weeks, mm. and it's continuing on that upward trajectory, um, currently trading at 5,667.20 points, and this also currently is being surged by by the the bets for interest rate cuts happening soon in the US. Mm -hmm. um, so so it's really been doing well in that space. With our FTSE 100, um, we've seen a, a decline in 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 that index, and it slipped yesterday after the UK inflation data mm -hmm. was released, and it came out higher than expected which then indicates that in the UK maybe interest rates will not be cut as quickly as as in the US or as the market hopes so then that made um, the the FTSE 100 slip yesterday um, okay. and our JSE all share index has been quite steady but I think we we were anticipating movement or or to see what kind of movement will occur after after the sub announcement tomorrow and after the President Cyril Ramaphosa also makes his address to Parliament. All right, thank you for that analysis, uh, Zibu. And that's it for our market analysis. It's 10 minutes before 3 o'clock. Let's take a break. Digital helps you make cross-border payments. Human gives you global specialists. Digital allows you to apply for a loan anytime, anywhere. Human connects you to credit experts. Digital puts you in control of your money, while Human connects you to wealth advisors.